Hey, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. Today we are talking about K390. It's a steel that was developed by Bowler as an alternative to Crucible CPM 10V. 10V has been around since the late 70s and has been very popular as a steel with high wear resistance, yet still maintaining moderate toughness. So 10V got these properties by having a high volume of vanadium carbides, which was only possible because of the relatively recent powder metallurgy technology that Crucible developed. However, Bowler wanted to have their own version of a steel like this, so they reduced the vanadium a little bit and replaced it with more molybdenum, tungsten, and cobalt. They submitted a patent application in Austria in 2002, and the steel was announced in 2004. So why add the moly tungsten cobalt? Primarily that is for a property called hot hardness. So hot hardness means that the steel can be heated up to high temperatures and still maintain its hardness. So hot hardness. This is also done by improving something called secondary hardening, where the hardness of the steel is increased at higher temperatures. So normally you would temper a steel at like 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 500 degrees, something like that. But with secondary hardening steels, usually steels with significant moly or tungsten additions, they secondary harden. So if you temper it at a higher temperature like 900, 1000, 1100 degrees, the hardness actually goes up again because the steel precipitates a bunch of fine carbides such as molybdenum, vanadium, tungsten carbides. So 10V with only 1.3% molybdenum didn't have really high secondary hardening, and so K390 was developed to have more moly, tungsten, cobalt to be able to have more secondary hardening and better hot hardness. This is desirable in industry because it means that the steel isn't as susceptible to overheating during grinding and polishing uh, because, you know, when you're grinding steel, it heats up by friction, and so if you've tempered a steel at 400 degrees, if you've heated it up to 600, 700 degrees, it's going to be over-tempered. But if you temper the steel at 1,000 degrees or 1,050 degrees, you have to heat it up significantly hotter to overheat it. So this hot hardness helps with that. There's also coatings that they want to apply to steel that also might heat up beyond a 400 or 500 degree tempering temperature, or even certain applications where the steel will be operated at a high temperature. So this is desirable in industry. In knives, not as much, but even in knife making, just like with normal tool and die work, there is heating of the steel that occurs during grinding. So there are benefits, even though as an end user of a knife, the hot hardness isn't all that relevant. So this steel K390 has seen some more popularity in recent years, primarily through Spyderco knives. They came out with a Mule in 2013 and then a Police 4 in 2017. There were custom knife makers, a handful of them, that had used K390 prior to this, most notably Phil Wilson. But it's really been popular in recent years, or at least people are asking me about it in recent years, because of Spyderco. So this deal is interesting. You know, Bowler advertises that K390 has higher toughness than 10V, with only a small decrease in wear resistance. So I wanted to see if this is true. In the past, I had already done some Catra edge retention testing of K390, so I knew where it was relative to 10V, but I had not yet had the chance to test the toughness. So I was able to finally get some steel that was thick enough for the toughness coupons that I do and were able to test it. But first, let's talk about the microstructure. Now, both Bowler and Udahome advertise that their powder metallurgy technology is more advanced and better than Crucible's. They advertise it as third-generation powder metallurgy technology, and they say that there are fewer impurities in the steel, primarily oxides, and that they use a finer powder for a finer microstructure. However, when we compare the microstructure of three competing steels, K390, 10V, and Venetis 8, Venetis 8 is Udahome's competing product, the carbide structures look very similar. So whatever this third generation powder metallurgy technology entails, the resulting microstructure is very similar between the three steels. So we don't see a clear divide between K390 and 10V just looking at the carbide structure. Uh, in some places, it might even look slightly finer in 10V, but ultimately, they are similar. They all have between 15 and 18% vanadium carbide, and they are relatively fine. These microstructure, microstructures are finer than many stainless steels like M390, for example. They have less carbide and finer carbides 
than those steels because it's only vanadium carbides. Vanadium carbides tend to coarsen more slowly than chromium carbides. And so when you have a non-stainless steel made up of only vanadium carbides, the carbides are smaller and that can often lead to better toughness. So the microstructure of these steels actually looks quite good when compared to steels you might be familiar with like S30V or M390. So looking at wear resistance and slicing edge retention in the Catra test, K390 and Venatus 8 are a small step down from 10V. It is measurable, I will say. They're definitely in the same category or the same ballpark. One surprising thing is that even though K390 is in between 10V and Venatus 8 in terms of vanadium content, its wear resistance was only marginally higher than Venatus 8, almost within the noise of this test. Now, it looks like Venatus 8 is a little bit lower than K390 on my chart here, but not if we compensate for hardness. So there are dotted gray lines on this chart which show the approximate effect of hardness on Catra edge retention. And you'll see that both K390 and Venatus 8 are only a little bit below this uh, trend line here. And you can see that 10V also approximately follows this trend line, which I did test at two different hardnesses. So K390, very high on this chart. It has excellent edge retention from that high vanadium content and the large volume of vanadium carbides. 10V is a little bit above it, and vanadis 8 is a little bit below. Okay, toughness is the new test that I did. So I did three coupons. He treated to three hardnesses, 62.5, 64.8, and 66.5 Rockwell. And I have a simplified chart here because my normal non-stainless high alloy steel toughness chart is getting really busy and it's hard to see anything on it. So here's a reduced chart. So definitely we want to pay attention to K390 versus 10V and Venatus 8. And as Bowler advertised, K390 is a little bit tougher than 10V. And that difference seems to increase with lower hardness. K390 is also surprisingly close to Venatus 8, even though K390 has more carbon than Venatus 8, 1% higher vanadium, and also cobalt, which usually reduces toughness. It's quite close to Venatus 8. So again, the wear resistance of these two steels was very similar, and the toughness is very similar. Venatus 8 looks like it has a little slight edge on K390, though perhaps they would look more similar if I had another coupon at 60 or 61 Rockwell. We won't know unless I do another coupon. Another surprising thing is that once you get to around 65 Rockwell, the three steels, Venatus 8, K390, and 10V, all are dead even. And this gives an advantage to 10V at the higher hardness because, as you remember, the 10V was a little bit higher in Catra edge retention. So if you're going to be 65 plus Rockwell C, from this data, it looks like 10V is the way to go. At least here in the USA, 10V is the easier steel to obtain anyway. And because this steel has been popular since the 70s, it's actually quite easy to get this steel from other manufacturers as well. It can be advertised as an A11 powder metallurgy steel, or the bowler version is K294, I believe. We'll check that in post. Comparing that with other steels, K390 is pretty good. It's actually in line with many popular stainless steels. It's similar to Vanex, XHP, S35VN, CPM154, and higher than S30V and M390. So the steel actually has pretty good toughness. Sometimes people see these really high wear resistant steels and they automatically assume, oh, it has low toughness. But no, if you're happy with the toughness of M390, you're actually upgrading in toughness by moving to K390. So you can get higher wear resistance and higher toughness, though you have to give up corrosion resistance versus the stainless steels. So K390 is in a pretty good spot for overall properties, I think. And if we had a stainless steel with similar properties, everybody would be very excited about it. The only downsides really are that it's all vanadium carbide, which is good for properties, but that makes the steel more difficult to grind and polish, such as in polishing steps and sharpening, because vanadium carbide is harder than normal abrasives like aluminum oxide. However, if you're using CBN or diamond, that is not an issue. In terms of heat treating the steel, I did some simple experiments on austenitizing versus hardness with a temper of 300 degrees. And using 1800 resulted in 63 Rockwell, 2150 got all the way up to 68 Rockwell. So you can definitely heat treat it to a wide range of hardness. 
Normally, I would expect tempering at 400 degrees to drop that hardness by a couple of points, but surprisingly, with my toughness coupons, tempering at 400 degrees, it was only about half a Rockwell lower than these earlier hardness experiments I had done. I'm not 100% sure why that is. Maybe I just did a better job in quenching, or more likely, this K390 may have been a little higher in carbon or a little lower in certain other alloying elements which would result in a little bit higher hardness. Because remember, this was a new different bar of K390 I purchased. And every new heat of K390 they produce is going to have a little bit different composition. So if I were recommending heat treatments to knife makers, I would say austenitize between 1800 and 2150 for 20 minutes. Thicker steel may need longer. If you're not using cryo, you may need to use a lower top end. If you do an austenitizing versus hardness chart of your own, you know, you do coupons at different hardnesses, you'll be able to see where that hardness starts to drop off if you're not using cryo. Uh, I use plate quenching, which is a great, great way of doing it. It helps maintain flatness and also is a faster quench than just using still air. I use liquid nitrogen cryo. If you don't have that, dry ice is second best. The freezer is last best. And then tempering at 400 degrees gave a good balance of hardness and toughness. So temper twice for two hours each time and you get good properties. I did not austenitize any lower than 1800. You might be able to go a little lower than that and get closer to 60 Rockwell because even my 1800 degree austenitize with a 400 degree temper was still 62 and a half Rockwell. So you could probably get a little bit lower, but I'd probably start to get a little bit scared if I went too much lower than that, just a lot of leftover carbide in the microstructure. Uh, because for one thing, you would probably want to go high enough to dissolve all of the chromium carbide. But, I mean, you're not going to break the steel or ruin a knife or something. So, uh, to summarize, K390 has excellent properties. It has what I'll call good toughness, along with very high wear resistance and edge retention. Venetus 8 and 10V offer similar properties. So, if you're shopping for knives and you can find one of these steels and not another, I wouldn't select one based on the steel, probably. I would go with whatever model of knife or knife maker I was more interested in. Uh, another thing I'll note is that CPM 15V, I was looking at this and a couple people had asked me about it because of some Spyderco knives in 15V recently, and my toughness rating for 15V is half a point too low. So it should be 3.5 instead of 3.0. I know, I'm sorry about that 0.5 that I did not give to 15V. I looked at my Excel spreadsheet where I was calculating the ratings based on my experiments, and it said 3.5 for 15V. So why did it end up 3.0? I don't know. Because it was only half a point off, I didn't notice this when I would check through the ratings later. You know, it's not a big difference. It's not like I put a 6 instead of a 3.5. But anyway, sorry to 15V for that 0.5 that I took away from you. So thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, again, I can't do experiments like this unless I can have the money to pay for them. If you want to learn more about knife steel, you can read Knife Engineering. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm not getting enough subscribers. I need more subscribers. I know I'm very needy like every YouTuber. Click the bell, whatever that does. I never click the bell. I don't know what it does, but apparently it's a good thing. Like the video, share the video, tell all your friends about the exciting new K390 video. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody.